if you want to know my, my main advice for you, if you're in silver and you're playing Ghana currently, play Moira. Easier to aim with. If you only care about climbing and not that having that much fun, Moira is literally a free pick right now. Throw damage orb, have no problem. And yeah, <laughs> just play Moira. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want to play Ana, your primary goal should be obviously Max is going to damage boost uh, the Junkrat and the Hanzo. More the Hanzo, she's going to go for S's, so your primary goal is to try to keep your tanks up, look for cheeky sleep darts, look for good antis. You don't have anybody to set up your antis, so you're probably going to be able to be forced to play around while the enemy team doesn't have a shield, when the enemy team doesn't have a shield or not. Anyway, playing behind. First things first, as a support, let your tanks walk past. I don't know if you did this on purpose, this being silver, you need to understand, the same as in League of Legends for people that play. Let the chunky ones, let the tanks walk first, so you don't frontline as a support. Over here, Hanzo, for example, is the first one. Nope, let the Zarya and Sigma walk in front. You all picked at the same time and you just got lucky here. You see Hanzo was in front, then you were like behind the Zarya, but you could have gone, gone like easily headshotted. Anyway, when you play from here, play from cover, play from around this wall, no need to like move that much, just wait here until you can have a good angle. Also, you're gonna see that you are able to see somebody on the bridge in front, if uh, they have a Hans or somebody peeking, but you have the junk card going there anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. Because if you move like this constantly in front, uh, then... Um, you're at the risk of your Sigma dropping the shield and you're dying. That's the that's the thing that I want to highlight on. Your goal right now, even if you land the Sleep Dark or a Nate, nobody's going to die. The distance is too big. You know, like the distance is, is too big. So the, the shield drops can get headshotted from here, from here, from here, from everywhere. Even if you land the Sleep or a Nate, you're just probably going to die. See? This is a small mechanical error. This is... A thing in silver and also a thing in low ratings as well understand what you are afraid of over here chat don't you fucking care w like really bro bro you do this chat let's be you do this like really kick w your mother is not not this dude you do this i do this we all do this shit happens the important thing is the important thing is is why he did it, not be, not, not, uh, haha, he did it. You did it because you are afraid of dying of something. That's why you rushed the sleep duct. Again, I need to insist on the fact that you can see the enemy team come after 15 seconds have passed. The second half, the second 15 seconds have passed, you need to press tab and see what they have. When you press tab, you need to understand what can kill you from a certain distance and where you should be safe. If you see that the enemy team runs with Widow on this section of the map, Widow Hanzo, then you cannot stay in open space that freely. But if the enemy team runs with Reaper that requires you to be in very close range, or with McCree that has a very big damage fall off at this distance, there is no reason for you to be scared about anything around you. So there is no reason for you to rush the sleep tact. Even if you get damaged, it shouldn't be enough damage to like force you to do something. Okay. Wait, bro. I need to try and make it full screen. Give me a second. Nope. That's how the video is. Pepe hands. Mini player. What the fuck is this? Wow. <laughs> Ah, I think I know what it is. Wait, give me a second. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what it was. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna play it in a second, chat. Yeah, okay, okay, I fixed it. Sorry about that. It was, it was like from uh, the epic pen. So again, with a sleep duct, no reason to rush it. Just be. Safe. I know you you are feeling that you are like under threat. So see how constantly you are moving. Whenever you see players move like this constantly, like it all all always it always has a reason, you know. Like over here, under not any threat. You just need to dodge the fire stack and that's it. Okay. Now let's continue playing this. So that's the first thing: identifying when you're safe and when you're not safe. The nade got you a kill. The nade and the rock got you a kill. So that was good. Even from this long range nade, arguably people can say that you're not gonna get any value out of it. Well, 
you're probably gonna need the nade at the other corner to be frank so i will not insist on using the nade here ideally in high rank gameplay this doesn't work that much but in low rating if you land the nade it's more than often a kill so you throwing the nade was at a good angle good decision no problem ml7 smart when you're getting to this position you have a very huge advantage right now okay now you need to think you need to press tab i don't know if you press tab or not and you need to think what does the enemy have they have a reinhardt can reinhardt uh, kiss me with his hammer from a uh, range of 69 meters no can reaper kiss me with his guns from a six range of 69 meters no can hog uh, hook me from a range of 69 meters no so you need to walk and play outside of the range of their effective potential so to say to explain this better this is about creating space chat. It's actually good that it's I'm going to show it in a silver bot. Okay? So this is about creating space. What did I say? I said that they have what? They have a Reinhardt. A Reinhardt's effective range, let's say it's this. Maximum. They have a hog. Let's say uh hog's effective range is uh Wait, Hog has a bigger effective range. Wait, let's delete this. Oh, shit. Wait, I'm gonna do it with paint. It should be easier. Uh, brushes. Size. Went big size. Okay. This is Reinhardt. His effective range. He can only swing his hammer and then throw a fire strike. We don't count the fire strike. Um, two. This is, this is Hog. Okay. Hog has a bigger effective range. He has first, let's say, for the sake of the example, a short effective range. And uh, let's say medium tier effective range with his right click that has some fall off. It's not like this, but you get the example. And also he has a hook range. I don't know if that's outside of his effective range, but for the sake of example, it's like this. So the maximum ability he has, like when he, when, after he used hook, he's only effective in this range. Okay. If he didn't use hook, then he's effective in this huge range. Okay. So you need to keep an eye out for that to not get hooked. But... But I actually made his ult icon. Okay, interesting. And Reaper is only effective in like, let's say short range. Now, you see what the problem is? You as a player are over here. You see the space, bro? Mm, mm, mm. Give me all the space, bro. I can go, I can graffiti the walls. I can go and pee on the walls to show dominance. Like, you can do anything you want with this space. You can go and build a house like in Sims. The enemy is playing in this. It's a 6 versus 3. Okay? You can move wherever you want. You don't need to be scared. I'll show you in a second. So. Six versus two. Go in a trip. Use hook. Go, go, go. Don't stay behind the reaper. Fuck the reaper. Go behind. Don't be scared. Okay. Walk. Okay. Pushing the payload. Reaper no fade. Hope you called out reaper no fade. Reload like. Oh my fucking god. This is silver. Oh, it fucking hurts me. <clears throat> okay. Let's watch it again. You get the kill. You can walk in front. You can walk over here, for example. Be aggressive. You can play around this wall if you want. Okay, that's the first thing. Like, no need to walk back. No need to walk back constantly. No need to walk back and forth, back and forth. Just walk in front. Of course, one thing we didn't keep an eye out is Reaper's TP. Which, which is about cooldown management and it's about silver. So, in this particular case, if your team is 6 versus 2, the enemy hog is in front. Four people are focusing the hog and you're also seeing that hog. Also seeing hog. You don't need sleep dart, you don't need nade, he's going to die anyway. It's understanding and saving your cooldowns. What can the Reaper do to you? He's only effective in a certain range, right? He's only effective in this range. But he can TP to somewhere and be effective in this range. So, what does the Reaper do? Use your sleep dart onto the hog. After the team fight was won and everybody was over here. And he's behind, you don't have nade, you don't have sleep dart for him. You understand? Like, whenever you use your abilities, you need to have like a special meaning behind them. You went like, I need to kill the hog, I need to kill the hog, right? 
But if you would have had the nade over here, instead of trying to throw random shots at him, you could have slept him. And after he fades out to the left side, you could have like naded him. Oh, and by the way, like oh, like here, easy nade, and then he's dead. He's very low. He would have died anyway if you applied the nade. He got out. He died anyway. But still, him not dying there, you used your sleep duct for him after, and then you wasted your sleep duct. Now another thing that's also mechanically speaking, this is actually um, silver guys. By the way, I have a question. Wait, I know you're in chat. Is this your first account? Like you are uh, level 38 or is it like a smurf? Upgrade HS silver smurf. No, you have a level 151 still. That's not that much high of a level. That's not that much high of a level. And uh, I'll explain why. Let me swap to the maps. There was a thing, here, a thing here that you got panicked a bit. And that's because you didn't play the game long enough. What's the map called, dude? I always forget. Havana, no. Uh, I can't find it. Rialto. Okay, found it. Again, chat. This is courtesy of uh, Stat Banana. So you can go and check them out it's for the maps. To understand strategies and shit at statbanana.com. So, this is my problem, my friend. It's understanding the ways that um, being effective with your movement. Rivalto. <laughs> so, the payload is stopped here, right? Reaper rates from here. And what does the Reaper want to do? He's not going to rate inside here and stay here, bro. He's going to rate. Like, he's not going to do this and fight here because he's going to die. He's going to raid his ass all the way out over here and then either try to go to the Mega or try to go over here. And I'll show you how it went. So again, the payload was stopped here. You panicked for a bit and you started chasing him when he was already here. You chased him a little bit over right around the payload, right? And then he got away over here when you could have just walked in front. And wait for him here. I can understand what he wants to do with his movement. Where he wants to go to. You know? That's what you want to wanna aim for. Um, let me continue this. Okay. Good. So, let me play it. By the way, missing the sleep dart on Hog. That's a mechanical thing. No problem. Stuff happens. It's also high ping. So, right, right now, he rates out. And now you need to think. Where is he going? What's he doing? Like your subconscious isn't like, I need to chase him. Where is he going? And now you chase him, you walk behind the payload. When you walk behind the payload, you need to cover this distance. You need to cover the distance from here to here, which takes a second. And a second in Overwatch is very fucking important. You know? Because right now, you're going to walk in front. And because of this, because you weren't in front enough to hit him once, because he took you one second to walk from there to there. He could have died earlier and he could have like he healed up the Hanzo in front and also the Junkrat. Every second and every action matters. Using the sleep act also for him. Whenever you use the grenade onto a Moira, I highly suggest to try to keep the grenade after she uses fade. In this case, Moira has zero cover and it's obvious that he's, she was going to fade from here to here because she didn't have any cover, right? So use the nade on um, on the Moira after she uses Fade. Imagine landing the nade here after she used Fade onto three people without any shield. Because if you use the nade and you hit it, Moira fades, right? You don't know if she has nade. It's like the same with Genji coming at you. You don't know if he has Deflect. If you use the Sleep Dart and he has Deflect, unlucky, you die, right? He sleeps you. But if you, if you wait for the Deflect and you sleep him, they're not that unlucky. Uh, I see bro, I see this. I'll have to direct you to a certain video. I'm sorry for the sellout, but this shot should have been a quick scope. You need to learn how to quick scope. It's one of the core mechanics with Tana, and if you really wanna have a better understanding of the hero, you need to quick scope and you need to understand when to do it. In this particular case, if you like you can quick scope once and then Literally unscope to shoot faster again and then look for an aid in front because if you shoot like this once Twice you're not covering any ground and there's no way for you to look for a nade. So See three shots 
I'll show you what I mean by this. So, if you would have went for a quick scope onto the junker over here, you know what I would have done? I would have walked to the left after that, because you can jump and quick scope, so you position yourself, that's the advantage. Scope, unscope shots are projectiles and they're hard to hit, right? But after, uh, in a small area, and it's on a small distance, they're the fastest way to heal people. If you uh, if you want to heal people at a distance and wow. you don't care about giving away their position, you need to uh, stay scoped in, right, to heal them up. Quick scopes allow you to stay scoped in, so do hit scan shots, as in be sure that you're going to hit them, and reposition yourself. Like you can quick scope and jump without staying zoomed in, because when you stay zoomed in and do scoped in shots, you're moving very slow. So what I would have done is quick scope the junk rat, move to the left side, and with Ana, your strongest tool in this meta and in ranked in general, because people don't listen for sleep darts, is the nade. You're going to have your nade up, and there's a small angle from here to here where you can just throw the nade. You can just quick scope the junk at once, walk to the left, quick scope him again, or do one scope shot or whatever, and then look for a nade from here. And I'll play the VOD, and I'll show you. One shot, two shots, now nade. You see the Reinhardt shield? If you walk in the room, the Reinhardt shield will be over here, and you can nade a little bit to the left of it, and you can anti them, okay? You can anti the Reinhardt, you can anti the McCree, and you can maybe even anti the Moira. No problem. Mechanical error. Like, see? Try to make using nades easier for you. Kick, no, dude, you kick W that, but you you all do the same thing. So don't you don't you kick W this. This is like literally a mechanical error. You're way too agitated, you know? Be calm, be calm. The sleep dark usage here was okay. There was not any problem. But the nade, you you tried to like nade under it a bit. The intention was okay, but if you walked into the room, you would have made the mission easier, right? No need to lob the nade. No need to um, to like uh, look for uh, aiming it under the arch and stuff. So you need. So far, I think the entire vote I'll see you very agitated. And the reason why is probably because you watch a lot of flags play and see how fast they move and you try to replicate that style. But always understand that whenever we're doing stuff like this, it's because we're trying to obtain something with it. Over here, moving constantly, looking for nades like this and stuff, you're overcomplicating your job. So, just if you have a small room, nobody here, easy anti, rhino barrier, easy anti, no problem. Or extra. If I would have been you, and I would have been in silver, and this would be like the first game that I would play, I'm um, oh, the first um, level, I have less than 200 levels of Overwatch played, right? I'm not that confident in looking for aggressive grenades. I'm not that confident. But what I am confident in is the fact that I know that Ana is a healer that can heal from long range, right? So, if she heals from long range, I need cover. Again, to summarize, Reaper can't do anything to me from a long distance. McCree can only tap me and I can reposition myself. But instead of going for risky plays, which this would be probably for advanced players around level 300, 400, 500 and other stuff like that. If I would be you, I would highly suggest at this moment to enjoy the game, play from safe spots. Just be safe until you understand the basics of the game. I would walk over here, and you see like these small things? There's one over here to the right. I would play from there. This way I have an easy anti nade I have an easy sleep dart, I'm also in cover if somebody wants to hit me, I can just crouch, and I see the entire battlefield. If I walk to the left side, I'm suffocating myself with space. And to have like a perfect representation of what I'm saying... Give me a second. So, because I, I don't know if you are here on the Gibraltar talk. It's all about the space. So let's say this is the enemy team, right? Uh, yeah, this is the enemy team, okay? This is the space they're controlling. That's it. You see how suffocated they are, as in they can't do anything. And this is you with your positioning. So this is your team controlling this area, okay? Your team is controlling this area. And if, again, I would be an experienced player, if I would be an experienced player, I would look for an anti, I would walk in the room, and I would look to break the safe spot with an anti-nade, and I would win the team fight. 
but me being in Silver, this also gives me the feeling that I'm quite suffocated because I'm closer to the enemy team. Because you see how close this is, right? Like, this is quite close to you. Like, even though the fight is going in this section, you know, wait, let me make it with another color. The fight is going in this section, okay, with you being positioned there. And this for New York players can be intimidating. But what if, okay, what if you, wait, let me recolor everything. What if the team fight is going in this section instead of like that section, you know? Because what I want to say with your repositioning is if you stay here and your team is here, you see how safe you feel with people from here and here? You can just heal them without any problem, right? So if you stay here, you will subconsciously feel pressure. You'll feel that you can get flanked from there. You'll feel that you can maybe get, uh, there's a balcony here where people can walk. You feel that maybe you can get killed from there. And also you don't have line of sight. People usually, I know it's going to sound like a fucking forehead. You're afraid of mysterious stuff, so to say. If you play at this wall, you don't know what's going on around this wall. You can just hear them. It's like, let's say you walk into a haunted house and you hear noises, but you can't see shit. But if you have a sniper rifle and you stay across the field at fucking 69 kilometers away and you see the zombies or some shit from this big of a distance, it's not that threatening, right? So for you as a New York player, I would suggest like taking very long angles because the more you see, the more confident you are in what you're doing. Uh, yeah, let's continue. So over here, this position, I would play from here. Again, if I want to be ballsy, I want to carry, I would just uh, look for an aggressive grenade here. Also, like, see how much time you're not obtaining anything. When you're moving, you always want to get information. Always want to get pressure. Like, over here. Wait, I'll show you. Try the shots, no problem. By the way, uh, for a silver player so far, it, the reload management is quite good. Like, I know you reload. Like, see, you were a bit paranoid over here about somebody coming to the left side. You'd have, like, had no problem if you would have played from over there. Like, you walked to... You, your brain went like, wait, I, I saw something. I, I think I feel pressure from the left side. And right now, you're playing in an uncomfortable position for you because you can't handle the stress, so to say. At this moment, you're walking in front. Like, you as a healer... What did I tell you earlier about effective range? Look, look, look at the uh, I main bastion. Look at I main bastion. You know, like Mr. I main bastion over here can just hook you. Can just, they, they can tap you. Ryan can, look, look at his face. Look at I am bastion. He's fucking angry. What if he watch, what if he looks at you? You know, that's the problem. Like, Stay in the back. No need to be in front. You're not frontlining. Look, what if he hooked you? You would have hooked you. You would have died. No problem. Instead of making this uh, 6 versus 5, you would have made it uh, 5 versus 5. Because right now you're in the advantage, right? But the enemy team is at a disadvantage. You would have made it 5 versus 5. Could have been... Just stay in the back. Don't expose yourself to risks. See? You staying there, you felt pressure. You didn't know what to do. Wait, I'll play in slow motion to, to try and uh, explain your brain. Wait, let me let me stop this. I'm moving in front. Okay, we got a kill. I really want to push the pillar until the end. My uh, my sim is going to be low. I'm trying to sleep like the Lucius is jumping. Reinhardt got to sleep. Yes, I got to sleep like. I'm trying to nade Reinhardt because he's on the floor, but somebody woke him up. I'm starting to be quite low. My fucking oh shit! Oh, hug, hug, fuck, oh, hug. Okay, he got sigma. Okay, okay. I'm trying to heal up the sigma that's full HP and has a bubble. The junker is half HP, but Lucius in front of me. Lucius, Lucius. I need to reload because I don't have any reload management. I some buck puller. Um, oh my fucking god! I'm trying to heal the junker. Junker is dead. Uh, who do I heal? Who do I kill? You know, like you need to be organized. You need to be under control of what's happening. If you would have played from the back. Zero pressure. You would have been like, stay in the back, bro. 
Heal the Junkrat, bro. I'm not scared of the Hog. I'm not scared of Reinhardt Pin. I'm not scared of anything. Thanks a lot for reviewing right? my Moira VOD. So I think you would stay in the back, if you'd like and to. that's about ML7 it. Pogu, ML7 Olaf. The main problem with silver players and usually low rating players is they get scared of things, dude. And it's normal. When I play Fortnite, I'm petrified. When I play Fortnite and I see somebody literally with a fucking 10 story building. <laughs> what the fuck? What hit me? You know, I, I don't understand anything. The same with Overwatch. You're not even level 200. Of course, you're going to feel pressure when you have six people near you. And it's the same reason with, let's say, people that are good mechanically, but they play in GM for the first time. Of course, you're going to get nervous against somebody that's constantly top 500. It's human nature, unless you're, I don't know who. You know, like, try to detach yourself from all the pressure, okay? You're trying to embrace it, to take it all in. Maybe it's not the time at the moment. Maybe at the moment you still need to learn the mechanics of the heroes. If I would play a new game, if I would play, um, I don't fucking know, if I would play PUBG, I would take it slow. I would go in feed non-stop, understand, be panicked, and then I would take it slow. I would go like, what guns do I like? What characters uh, do I like? There's no characters in PUBG, I think, but still. Uh, how do I play? Um, where do I position myself? Do I want to play in this section of the map? I'm going to play in this section of the map. I'm going to know every corner. I'm going to know everything like that. I'm not going to go fucking 1 versus uh, 69 players in a, a small choke trying to uh, quick scope, uh, throw the nade, uh, play with one foot on the monitor and uh, literally aim with my pinky finger. I'm not trying to... Um... I can't handle that much information at the moment. I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying that feeding non-stop isn't the perfect way of understanding the game. Because I do think that to a certain extent, if you feed and you don't feel bad about it, you're gonna feel you're gonna learn a lot of things. If you listen to a lot of people that played Fortnite, one of their main goals was one of their main themes was go non-stop in tilted towers, poggers, and feed. Like go and feed. Feed one day, two days, three days, one week, two weeks. The problem with that and with Overwatch is if you feed like that, you're in silver or in bronze. And then you go in Twitch chat and you see Twitch chat going like uh, kick W when you're also stuck in plat getting carried from time to time. So don't you kick W him when he's trying to do mistakes and mis he's actually trying to take control over what's going on. It's better to do this than just sit in the back bro and carry me bro. Yeah bro nice. Push the payload. I'm gonna have myself a cup of coffee and stuff like that. Like th you're not carrying. Hello. Making mistakes like this is actually good. Okay, so throwing the nades into the arches, into the walls, it's better than just staying still and... Wait, wait, uh, I'm gonna cosplay a regular silver gunner, dude. <laughs> so this is the regular silver gunner on Twitch. Never stop fighting for what you believe in. Oh, you know? Just be chill, just be chill, okay? Just be chill. Pick an angle, stay like this, shoot like this. You know? And I know for Ghana players, we're gonna see in front. A lot of Annas, when we all first started playing Ghana, this is how we would sleep like people. You know, I don't know why everybody does this. I really don't know why. It's like we try to curve the arrow or some shit. I really don't, I can't explain, okay? Like, up until then, you see people are going, but then when they throw the nade, whoa, or when they throw the sleep dark, it's something like this. Hey, just be chill, okay? You need you need to go in training. If you're silver, you need to go in training range and do this. Boom. Wait. Boom. 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 Of course, it's not hitting the walls, hitting the bots. Boom. Boom. Pick around the wall. Boom. You know? Pick around the wall, throw the nade and hit both bots at the same time. Understand the trajectory of the nade. Kill that bot. Shoot the ground over there as an intimidation shot. That bot, 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 that bot. Now you wanna practice crouch spamming at the same time. Stay zoomed in. Crouch spam, crouch spam, miss the shot. That bot, 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 that bot. Reload, nano. 360 and then sleep. Of course, not that. 
that's um, just for style points. But still, you need to do things like this, dude. When I first played Ana, I was tragic. I was fuck. I, I, you know how I threw the nade first time with Ana? So the bot was over here. I played a lot of counter stack. This was me. Am I a joke to you? This is how I literally threw the nade in the beginning. Okay? So all, don't be afraid of doing things like that. So it's good being proactive. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I chat. Let me let me hop onto this again. Wait, let me let me mute it actually. Okay. <clears throat> so again, to be safe, I would play in safer spots. If you want to learn fast though and be in high stress environments, then do stupid plays like this, as in being very agitated. That's okay, as long as you understand why you do it. For example, when I was playing Apex and I was feeling my brains out. I stopped being agitated when I picked the guns I was comfortable with. When I picked a Mozambique, for example, or even a wingman, which I was tragic with, I would be like fucking Pepega. Or uh, I don't know what, but then I went like, dude, I would pick an ARG-99 gun. And then I was like, I pick ARG-99 gun, no problem. Here, the same thing. You play Ana, you play in that safe spot. I know this, I know this, I'm gonna do something, right? By the way, good, like, see the intention, see, this is, this is where I see that, you watch streamers, and you watch plays like this, this is actually smart, I don't expect this from a silver player. Okay, you got lucky with the execution, now, very smart here, so, this is the dog frame, okay, let's make the dog very small, it's not like this, but anyway, if possible, you need to try to aim the nade at the lowest possible way where the shield cannot block it. So, although the potential way of, of landing the nade is in all of this area, because the shield is tilted like that, the, the most success, because the Ryan can move, is over here, right? So whenever you throw nades like this, you need to throw it at the most probable area you can throw it without it getting fucked up after a while. Over here... I would have yoinked the nade, you got lucky, let's be honest, you got lucky here. I would have yoinked the nade over here, wait, over here, aim at the hook. You got lucky because the second you threw the nade, Ryan dropped his shield. Wait, how, how the, oh no, it exploded, wait, it exploded in Hawk's belly and it went under the shield or some shit like that. I thought he dropped his shield. Anyway, good sleep, good flank, everything good so far. Let's continue. <laughs> yeah, it's a silver board. So far panicking with how, how trying to uh, kill him with the sleep dog and stuff, that's a mechanical thing, don't worry about it. You'll get better at it with time, not trash the sleep dog, it's just aim and that's it. Now what you need to be thinking is, uh, I don't need to get booped on the bridge. Good try of the quick scope deck still. Also like, over here, when he's this low, you just need to do one shot, there's no need to sleep him. Like understand how much damage you need to do. If the hog is 1 HP, you shoot him, you don't sleep him, right? Just be chill. He almost got away because of it. Also, you had the nade, you know? Like, he walks in front. You're making your life harder, you know? You have the nade, bro. Throw the nade. What, what's Lucio's pattern over here? He can either climb on top of the window there, top of the window there, or he can go all the way around the wall. Where can I hit the nade so the radius of it affects all of his possibilities? You ink the nade here, so it affects all of this area. That's it. Nice and easy and safe, instead of shooting or trying, uh... Or, uh, trying uh, other stuff. Wait, you can't see his health? Anyway, even if you can't see his health, it's better to nade than to shoot him. Because he can't heal up, so people can finish him. Right now, it's safe to assume that he's full HP. And after that, he walks in. You tapped him once. You didn't. But he, he got hit, anyway. Still, throw the nade. It's better to throw the nade and hit somebody rather than risking the sleep duct. What did I just see?
Did Mickey just fall? <laughs> oh my fucking god. Okay, real talk. <clears throat> Okay, we'll talk. okay. This is nice. So he fell. I'm coming in. <laughs> so, my friend, <clears throat> the payload is pushing like this, okay? If the payload is over here, the safest spot you can be is probably around this pillar. When the payload reaches over here, in theory, the safest spot, you have a couple of spots. So, the payload, if the payload is here, you can be either in cover over here, which is quite risky. You can be in a little bit of cover from this area, but from here and here and here, you can get picked off by the windows, which I don't highly recommend. You can, so this is, um, this is spot number one. When the payload is here, you can also play from over here at the door frame, but you can also get contested quite easily. So I don't recommend this position either, position number two. When the payload is over here, you can also play from over here, but unfortunately the Mekri had a sick uh, MLG 69 flank by just falling into you, so this position was a no-no. But this wow. position is okay overall as it can cover you from multiple angles. And you have two other positions where you can play from. So, the payload is over here. Okay, this is the payload. You can play from these tags. Okay, or from this lamppost. The problem with playing from this lamppost is when the payload starts pushing over there, you need to cover all this distance. So, if you watch a lot of my games, if you play from here, then you're going to see that I get a lot of more results. And when the payload is like, if I hear or if I know that a lot of people are in front, I'm just going to keep on moving at this wall. And the reason why is because it's very hard to aim from up to down. Like the, verti the straight up aim or the down below aim is, right down is very hard to do if you want to be completely safe when you're pushing the payload and you want to be the safest town in the entire world just walk inside this room you can't get killed from there you can't get killed from anywhere payload is like the payload is here you go lee 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 lee, lee. you see this nice ass couch you just sit on top of this you have like a small tablet here and you just heal people from time to time while they you're scrolling to instagram the... they can't see it because of my face you need to take my my word for it as you can see the sun came into my eyes to show you that i'm actually a very truthful person this this is an absolutely amazing couch okay wait i'll show you the couch you see the couch dude like you can just play from inside here the small dog this room is very safe you can only get flanked if somebody's going all the way under the spawn and getting here but if you want to be really safe this position is very good. If you want to be a little bit cheeky, I would play from this side. In case I get contested, I can anti. My teammates can help me. If somebody's above me, I can take the duel quite easily. I can get in cover by playing over here. A big no-no in silver and in general all ratings is whenever you push the payload, dude, you need to be into your own cover, not the payload. The payload is not the bodyguard that has like this much uh, protection around you, you know? Like, when you stay here, you can't be over here. If you don't need to push the payload, of course, you need to be you need to be in cover a bit, right? You got lucky here. McCree dropped. What if McCree didn't drop and he just tap tap headshot? Understand? You need to be you need to be safer. You need to find safe spots where you can play from. Let's continue with this. Anyway, let's play it a little bit back. Like right now, look, you're pushing. You. You somehow get out of silver, get out of gold, and get over here, and I don't know, you get in plat or diamond. And now, McCree picks the window, tap, tap, headshot, dead. That's it. And then you go, like, I'm stuck in plat. You have cover, you have wall. Where are you? You know, I'm just dead. Like, look, McCree, imagine McCree being full HP. Tap, tap, dead. Dead. You can't do anything. Imagine if you would have played over here in the back, could have saved the Mercy, could have literally anti the Doomfist, could have slept the Hog afterwards. Well, look, exactly what I talked about with sleep darts. You know, this is about practice. I'm gonna show you some drills on how to practice sleep darts. Exactly how I showed you earlier in training range. Look, when you aim the sleep dart, you. See? Eventually get the kill. That's good. Over here, more guys behind you. Ooh, nice sleep. Nice kill. 
You push the payload, you want a safe spot, bro, play at these boxes, bro. There's a small jump that I always show on stream if you watch uh, when I play on Rialto, on these boxes. You can play from here, you can play from here. Nice safe spot, not be that much in front over here because it's a little bit risky. If you want to be completely safe, if you want to be YOLO, then you can stay where you want. It's your position. Ryan behind, detect the problem, start walking back. Zoom in front. And now see, this is multitasking. So, <clears throat> It's like, you see a Reinhardt pinning across the map and you go like, easiest kill of my entire fucking life. This dude is feeding his fucking brains off. I'm going to fucking nade and stomp and kill. Oh shit. Can Blizzard please nerf Doomfist? Like, look at this hero. Like, oh my god. Like, I'm trying my best and I get killed by him. Like, dude. Like literally, it's not your job to kill the Reinhardt, your job is to survive. Look, I'll show you. Be safe, Ryan pins from there to there, easy clap, walk inside the room, best friend. Wanna be able to help up your teammates while also being covered, walk inside the room. Am I safe here? Right now, you need how to, you need how to. You need to view it. You, you go like, am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Nope. I'm in open space. No cooldowns. No nothing. So what if you get a kill onto the guy in hug? Who gives a fuck? Like you just go inside here. This wouldn't happen. Your team eventually starts pushing. It's about closing angles and senses of sense of security. So, if the payload, if, let's say, wait, let's, let's uh, push this a little bit. Let's uh, play this a little bit, just for the sake of the example. Uh, actually, I'll show you later, I'll show you later what I mean by it. It's actually one of the primary things that every vote review I do, a flow rated plagues, uh, the same thing happens over and over. By the way, rushing sleep darts and things like this, like, whenever you sleep dark, the intention is good, but the execution is bad because you haven't done enough sleep dark so far. I have, I think, millions of sleep darts, for example. I think any Ana player has millions of sleep darts. You're probably not even at 1k sleep darks done, so don't get worried of it. Don't get worried about it. It's just practice. You haven't practiced sleep darts. I'm more... And who gives a... Even if you would have landed sleep darts like that, nobody can kill them, okay? Let's continue playing. Again, don't walk in front. Good sleep dark onto him. I don't know if you call this out or not. By the way, um, if you want to know how you can anti him in this particular angle, it's going to be very hard. Okay, so if you really want to hit him, you can play from this spot and wait for him to wake up and do a non-scope shot and nade the second he wakes up. Or if you want a proper execution by just nading and forcing him out of position in case you think that your team will not be able to follow up on your sleep duct. There's no problem in you waking up early. You can just throw the nade over here on the pillar and hopefully the a the range of the effect will wake the Doomfist up and purple him off. Overall, in this case, I don't think you need to worry about him. There's no way you can lob the nade from here to over here on the ground. I'm not confident in doing this myself and I don't think anybody is this confident in sending a certain angle and landing the nade exactly on his head. So no need to worry from a mechanical point of view on what to do in this case. You just need to ignore him and call it out. <clears throat> and also, like, what would happen if you would walk, if you would walk here and he would have punched you, you know? Otherwise, like, be safe. Again, what would happen here? Like, look, same thing. You see how much space the enemy has to kill you? They can kill you from this arch. They can kill you from this window. They can kill you from the left side. Even somebody picking from the right side can go behind the payload. Where's your cover? Always have cover. The way you're moving, it's like, it seems like you're not fully confident in your mouse movement. It's just because you haven't played a lot of games, probably. Or haven't played uh, Overwatch that much. I haven't played FPS games. You need to know how to view aiming. It, sensitivity doesn't matter that much, in my opinion. 
what matters is how capable you are of controlling it. You can, if let's say your goal is to hit the target that's, I don't fucking know, 10 kilometers away and you have only one pistol, if you trust your aim and you only aim like just slightly, nobody gives a fuck if you hit the target. Of course, you can't hit with a pistol from that range, but still. If you have a sniper and you have a different sensitivity on it, so to say like your hands are shaky and you still hit the target, nobody gives a fuck. The same in, in Overwatch. As long as you're confident in hitting your shots with your sensitivity, it's all good. For you, you have two options. You either get used to this sense, or uh, you try to lower it down a bit. Overwatch is your first FPS game. It's understandable. Not having even level 200 and... Being your first FPS game, it's understandable, to be honest. Like, you're rushing things a little bit. You're playing too fast. You know how you're doing? It's like... The best comparison I have is this. You're 10 years old, and you're trying to do what professional bodybuilders are doing, instead of taking it easy. That's the best comparison I can give you. You're at your first FPS game, you're not at the same... Uh, level of control that other people are, you're not confident in your own abilities and stuff, but you want to do what the best in the world do. You can't do that. At, at the moment, you can't do that. For me, I've played FPS games a long period of time. Like, you don't have the resources to do that. And that's okay. We all, start, we all started from this. When I first played Counter-Strike, you would... You would burst of laughter if you would see me first play FPS games, first play PC games. I think the same for everybody. Take your time, nobody's rushing you. Who gives a fuck if you're civil? Hey, you're not bronze. You can hold the mouse and the keyboard, so you're not bronze. Oh, and also, you're playing Ana, which is one of the hardest heroes. Like, it's very brave that you picked Ana to play in your first FPS game. Again, if you, if you only care about climbing and not being a good player, not having... Like, if you really want to win and that's all that matters for you, you're like you have a bet with somebody at school or some shit that you're going to be gold next season, you want very fast results, just play Moira. Not that aim intensive, no nothing, you just need a little bit of brain in when to fade, when not to fade, when to heal, when not to heal and stuff like that. But if you really want to have fun, Ana is a very rewarding character. and um, But it's hard to learn, Ana. Good that you don't chase the tracer. This being silver, I would expect people to chase the tracer and stuff like that. Like overall, it shows that you you started to see how other people are playing. Mm -hmm. Like see, there's no there's no positioning in silver there's no nothing there's only mechanics you know as in only take duels hogs out of position know how to kill the hog hit the sleep dart hammond slams you know when to sleep dart hammond um people are low know how to hit them and don't panic like right now you're if i would go very in depth you're in front of orisa and zarya you know it's like you know how the comparison is i don't fucking know like you're a you're a VIP at an, an event, you have six bo you have five bodyguards with you and you walk in front of the bodyguards. That's exactly how you're playing right now. Like, you're under, I don't know, an assassination attempt or whatever and you walk in front of the bodyguards, literally. Like, their job is to be in front always, if you're silver, your tanks are in front, always staying behind the tanks. Anna broke her hand there a bit. You know, it's. I wanna, I wanna say something. I'll see after. Let's see if you cap the point. Again, same, same thing. Over and 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 over again. Pick a spot. Play from that spot. Be safe. Always think what can kill you, what cannot kill you. In this case, in this case, let me swap and show you. So, in this case. The, the way you learn the safest spot to play from is watching how other people play until you can understand and try to un, try to um, 
try to copy their positions until you can understand why they do them. If I would learn how to play CSGO again, I would yank the shit out of strategies from all the pro players or the players that I just like, you know? I would copy their entire position until I can understand what they're doing. If over here you're pushing the payload, the payload is here. At this moment with your experience, there's no way you can understand the fact that if you play from this area, you can get killed by Doomfist, by uh, Hog or whatever else they had. Like this position is very bad. This angle is not that good at healing the payload. As map specific tip, there's a small doorway here, right here, I think. You can see the payload quite safely. Okay, like this is your field of view. You can see the payload quite safely. You can also peek and see if somebody's going to flank from here, from here. Your main goal is to heal, not to do damage. Just stay in the back and survive as much as possible. So playing from here is actually really good. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you can play from this pillar or this pillar. This position should be more of a no-no. Like when the payload is here and pushing, you should never be over here. You can get killed from absolutely every angle possible. Whenever you're playing Overwatch, this is what you need. This is how you need to view it. If I stay here, what can can I die? And if yes, how can I die? What can kill me? You know, as in the most basic example would be this to understand the threats. So it's doing the most you most you possibly can. Okay, this is a basic lesson for everybody. I'll take this bridge. Okay, we all know that over here there's a window. Okay, like it's this window, and let's say hypothetically speaking, you need desperately to go from this side to this side past the bridge. And let's say that over here is, I don't know, a small building where if you get inside here, uh, you're going to win the game. Let's say for the sake of the example. Olaf, you have a nightmare. Wakey, wakey. For the sake of the example, you need to get here. If there's a wall here, 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 there's a wall here. There's a wall here, here, and then we keep on drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing until you can get over here. Then, duh, obviously, you're going to start at this wall, walk from here to here to here. As you can see, Widow has no angle so far on me if the Widow is sitting here. Walk here, still no angle, and now the brain starts thinking. If I go right side, I need to go this distance. If this distance allows the widow to shoot me from here to here, but I'm smart, so I won't go that distance. I'll go here and then I'll go here so widow can't see me. Then I will go here, I go here, and now my brain activates again. I will go either left or right, it doesn't matter, but now my brain will tell me this is not the wall, by the way. These are like walls. If I go left side and walk here, the widow has the angle, has this small angle. Um, to shoot at me, right? And this, like, angle and stuff. Because, in theory, when I'm going to pick, I'll show you something. Which is very important as well, but it's a little bit more advanced. If I go here and here and here, yeah, I'm safe, I'm safe. And over here, I just need to make the small leap from here to here. But, if I walk from here to here, then the angle is a little bit bigger for the Widow. And the further you are, the easier it is for the Widow to aim. If you pick right around the corner, you're going to see that it's it's like you move faster, so to say. It's like a, a visual impression. Like if you from here to here, you can just crouch and get here. Other than just walk from here to here in a straight line, she has like a little bit more field of view on you because you can see you from a longer distance. So this would happen if you're playing against the widow and your main goal is to get into this building and then you win the game. It's understanding cover. Now. What happens when you can't get in cover? So, uh, before that, let's say the payload is over here. Okay. And you play from here. And the enemy can see you. Wait, let's move this a bit. Oh, shit. Okay, so we go again. The payload is here. And you're over here. And the widow. Let's say the widow is here. The widow can see you from here. Teodoro has this entire line of sight, okay? She can see everything, okay? Now, where do you sit? You sit either behind the payload, but if you sit behind the payload, you can, you're exposed from left, from right, from people from above and from people from over here. But if you sit here, you have this wall that literally, you, your goal is to heal people on the payload, 
and the the widow can't see you, so to say, you know, because like there's this wall over here. Like you need to understand that you need cover. This is why you feel stressed in certain scenarios. Same as you did over there earlier. That's why you felt like so much movement. Like you were over here. Where is your cover? This pillar. Yeah, okay, congratulations. You are a cookie. Like, look, let's say people are past this pillar, okay? Like, they're not over here, they're over here. Look how much they can see. They can see you from here, from everywhere. But what happens if you stay here? They somehow need to find an angle due to... See they can't see you. Wait, can I do a line? Oh, I'll do my best chance of, at the line. You see? The field of view doesn't allow them. To see you. They can only see you if you're there over here, right? They can't see you like this. You know, like they only have a limited, limited vision. This is why I'm insisting on always finding cover. But let's get back to the widow example. Because this is where a lot of people choke. So you saw the easier part in which I show you this, this, beautiful lines and stuff. Like you're all safe and shit, right? Beautiful lines, okay, whatever. It's a beautiful life. Oh my fucking god. Oh, it's so safe. I have a lot of cover. I can get in a safe position. I can do what I want. Yay! I'm fucking blood. Yay! No. When you start growing up, people will punish you in higher ratings. Okay? So, this is why you're in master and you drop to plat. This is why you finish placements and you go like, Blizzard hates me. I lost 300 this year after placement. <clears throat> You need to understand that you will get punished if you don't have cover. Let's feel like this. If you're in the war, or whatever, and you start walking in a straight line with zero cover, and this is a sniper, in a straight line with zero cover, not moving, you're gonna die. If this is the sniper, there's no wall here, you zigzag in a certain pattern, then of course it's easy for the enemy sniper to see you. Okay? But, if there's cover here, cover here, cover here, you're going to take the smartest route possible and try to be as dodgy as possible until you get into cover. For example, you need to get, you start, wait, there's like this wall, you start over here at this small entrance, okay, you need to get out of here. How do you get out? Of course, if your brain is uh, fucking Pepega, you're not gonna walk like this because you're dead, right? You're gonna try and get to cover. You're gonna try and zigzag your way either over here, if you want, which I don't suggest. You're not gonna try to zigzag all the way over here. You're going to try to get to like the safest spot over here, you know? And always try to be unpredictable. The more unpredictable you are, the better. I'm not saying that it's perfect. Let's say you need to run across the field and you have, I don't fucking know, three people shooting at you. Like, you can't do anything. There's no wall. There's no nothing. What the fuck do you do? Dude, you try. To couch spam, not in real life, what the fuck, I'm just making analogies, but you try to be as dodgy as possible, and this is why a lot of people need to understand, you need to be as slippery as possible until you get into cover, when, when you play. Remember this, because this is why, why I'm trying, why I'm insisting on this, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, that movement needs to have an explanation. This was you on this section of the map. Like, yeah, you, you produce confusion, you know? But you are just running like this and not trying to go to an endgame. Where was your cover? What were you trying to achieve? Just run around, just make sprints and try to step every possible section of concrete on the map? You know? Like, try and have a destination when you walk like this. Like, yeah, you walk in front of the payload and stuff, but where do you want to go? Uh, um, uh, yeah, okay. Dead, uh, dead, 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 dead have a destination always think where you want to go you're over here people are chasing you um, um cover <laughs> okay i'm safe <laughs> same here you walk over here uh uh uh, uh cover <laughs> the faster you're gonna, you are to adapt to this the faster you're gonna learn the game it's that literally that simple over here wait i'll show you you're under stress over here. Um, uh, 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 heal, nade, sleep, uh, 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 You know? This is how you need to view it. This is how you need to have a destination in cases like this. You need to have a certain finality in what you're doing. Let's continue with this.
Voy de mi stop. Pues continue. Over here. You are the final destination. In the end. Right from there. <clears throat> By the way. It was very good that you took your time. Very good that you took your time. But look at Zen's HP charging. Wait, I'll show you. Look at Zen's HP. So you play this. Good sleep dart. Zen very low, bro. Very low. Look at the shield. Wait. Wait for it. Look. Boom until you hit that shot. And boom until you hit that shot. You hit the shot after and look at his HP. What if you would have done a quick scope? What if you would have done a non-scope shot and be more confident in your, in your game? This is about being faster, you know? Like, if you would have done a non-scope shot now, dead. Quick scope shot, dead. Maybe not dead, to be honest. I think this would have been probably 1 HP or 2 HP. But still, would have been way lower than him regenerating. Like, look, when you start, when you start zooming in, he starts regenerating. Look how much he regen. And this is just because you're not comfortable with your mechanics. This is only about playing as much as possible. It's not that important. But these are like small things that will help you to develop as a player. Because I can't insist as much as possible. If you stay and do the training range that I do. And uh, kill Anas 1000 times a day. You're gonna shoot faster bro. If you kill them 10 times a day you're not gonna shoot faster. Like this is all about practice, 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 practice. Play free for all, play custom training games, uh, shoot bots in training range, play aim training related games, excuse me for that. Play a lot of things like that. It's all about practice. If right now, if you're in silver or bronze or gold and all you do is just play Overwatch, you're doing it wrong. You're not gonna, it's not, it's not gonna, like, you're gonna play non-stop and then boom, you learn everything. It's like, let's say, you you don't practice law, you wanna be a lawyer, you stay in your lawyers, and uh, you think that in 30 years you're gonna know everything without gaining a single thing just because you're around people that do that thing. You need to study, you need to invest time into that. Until you learn the basics, at least. 60 seconds remaining. It's good that you're waiting, like, I'm, I'm vastly impressed to... to to be fair, your brain and decision making is more like this. This is the thing about you so far. You're more tailored to like gold or plat at least with how you view the game. Like you're thinking about logical things, but the way you execute them, you're still at silver. Good that you recognize to sleep like the bastion. That's good. You're waiting for your team to regroup. That's also very good. You start walking, but see. Open space, open space, if this just comes to you. Mistake. You regroup, and you finish the round. Now let's see on defense. Main goal, stay in the back, heal up, Orisa and Zagia, focus on DPS is not that much. Good that in the beginning, you're probably gonna look for an anti nade or stuff like that. Good. It's see, I, sh I see that you watch streams, so that's very good, again. No harm done with that sleep dog. Maybe they would have picked. Heal up and now again effective range. Try to get in cover because you don't want to get hooked by hog. Right now, like, look, this is also like very careful. Zen can right click you from this distance or can headshot you like this. You're not covered by this. So if the shield doesn't perfectly block this, I would play way in the back. So I don't get seen by anybody because my main goal is just to stay alive as a healer. Right now, like you're playing way too in close, too close to them. See, like very close. I wouldn't stay here at all. I would stay all the way in the back. Like, see, also exposed. In the back, in the back, in the back. Over here, at least over here. You, even from here, if you play, you can get exposed from there. You know? Like, even in the back. You, if you watch me play, I play from, like, that small thing with, like, four trees, four bushes and stuff. Like, at one of the bush where I told you to play on first point on attack. Don't you have to worry for about the flank? Okay. That's a good question. 
I'll show you. So, <clears throat> if you play from over here, so if you play from over here, you can get probably seen to this area. If you play from over here, you cannot get seen to this area, but you can get flanked from here. So, you want the perfect solution? Play from over here, bro. You can see everything. No problem. You're a long range healer. Who gives a fuck? If you want to be safe. If you want to be more risky, you can play from here and pick the corner a bit more, but that's more advanced. Like, it's just the way you position. Easy crap. Wait, wait, what the fuck? Okay. Like over here? Yeah, you're exposed from the back. You should stay more in the back. More, like, see? You can die from here. You actually heard the Widow shot, but it was from main. See, exactly as I told you, didn't have any cover here. No shield, no wall, no nothing. Or appear in the doorway below. Yeah, or even stay from here if you want, but then you can get flagged from high ground. By the way, another thing that I haven't insisted on is using the abilities properly. I know people will go like, yeah, but you don't tell me how to use my grenade or my sleep dart. <clears throat> your intentions are present. You know what you're trying to achieve. In order for you to try to get what you want to happen in your brain, you need to play the game more, understand the mechanics behind the nades and the sleep darts, and be more conservative with them. Always think, before you think what you can get the maximum out of, of your hero, always think... If there's a way, wait, Umagi, you ain't me with that question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that question after Umagi if you can remind me. I want to finish the vote at the moment. So always remember what can kill me. You know, if if you just think about that, like what can kill me, you're probably gonna climb up until gold or plat even without having proper ability usage. What can kill me and what can I kill? That's that easy. What can kill me and what can I kill? You know, about ability usage. Whenever you use the nade, it's always something like this. If you want to carry games when you're Diamond or Master, you want to get to GM and you want to be very good, then yeah, you need to be very creative with the nades and when you use your nade offensively, your team needs to profit on it. Over here, in silver, even if you land on a nade onto six people in front of you or over there in the back, who can take profit of it? You're better off using your abilities more defensively, uh, just for a bit until you get used. When you feel confident with them, as you did on attack, when you were attacking, you went in this room and threw that nade, that was a very good nade. You need to find openings like that. Over here, if you throw the nade here, who gives a fuck? What happens? You know? Like, nobody can follow up on it. You can't speed too fast. You can't do anything. You're better off, like, you're better off just keeping it. On scope shots. Hm. All of them scoped in shots here. Sleep dark usage comes with time. Moisty goes for August, throw the nade in, try to help them up a bit. When Hammond could test you in a 1v1 like this, you're probably gonna win the duel. Walk to your healer, okay? Make your life easier. This is another thing. When you're getting isolated, even if you talk or if you don't talk, it's safer to walk to your team. It's obvious that you're gonna win the duel and it's good that you recognize it. But you still want to take it, it's like you're not letting yourself die, which is good. Always fight for everything that's happening around you. But here, Mercy rest, Hammond's in you, contest you, walk to your Mercy, 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 walk to your Mercy. You got lucky that she came here and healed you up exactly at 30 HP. Just walk in front, you know, like walk to your other healer, ask for help. Or if not, just walk to your team, they might see and need help rather than just kite back, you know? Here, also, like you heard the Widow shot, look, zero cover. She can be here, she can be here, she can be here, she can be here, look, look how much she can see you, literally. She can, the only region that's blocking is this, that's it. She can also see you from here. The, how do you counter this? If you want me to be completely honest, there's a small store, stairway in the back, wait. Well, Widow's there, wait. So, in this case, to show you exactly what I mean. <clears throat> In this case, the widow is over here, right? So that means that her range is, let's say, like this. Let's say like this, okay? So she has this much range. But you see there's a wall here. So 
If you play from here, she can still see you. There's like these small things that can block it. But if you walk up the stairs, she can see you past this wall, bro. This wall blocks it. Play from here. And then you can heal your teammates from here. You know, like... Also, like, if you can't... Um, if you can't get into cover and you really need to move, like, let's say there's no way, like, your team is over here and you really need to move and heal them up. There's a small section in this room where you can play from and still see without the enemy widow seeing you because she can only see like this, you know, like, she can't see you like this. So, like, all the time you're playing, just think what angles can she see if she plays from there. That's what you want to aim for. If, hypothetically speaking, your cut... In this position, you need to crouch, spam, jump, not that much, move in certain patterns, so nothing else happens to you, you know? So you can survive that. Let's continue. Wait, I jumped in Overwatch, what the fuck? Like, look, you can just walk over there where the Hanzo was inside and heal from there. Over now, like, you're still exposed. It's good that you're moving, though. A lot of Anas in this rating just stay still. So it's good that you're moving. But see, you almost never crouch. You just jump. Look at the way though. If you play from the stairs, no problem. And then, same thing with multitasking. What can kill me? Widow there. But oopsie, they have a hook. I need to stay outside the hook range also. Okay, move fast forward. Also here, like look. Walk. Exactly as I talked about, you need to get somewhere in cover. Crouch, crouch spam, move in zigzag, try to look for a sleep dog. See, like, jump three times and that's it. And like, you're moving front in the back, now you're moving a little bit, now you crouch for a little bit. But, to be honest, wait. Alive, walk in front, hook pushes back, walk inside the room so you have more cover in the back. Like, right now you're not walking into any cover. See, like you're trying to think that the fastest cover to get is the one over there in the back when the fastest one is over here inside. You know, like z like crouch spam your way to safety into that room instead of over here because you see how exposed you are and died because of it. You never crouch because it's so uncomfortable the, on the keyboard. Then had the same problem. She changed the button of her couch to her scroll wheel and that's uh, that saved it. Like the, she couldn't uh, reach the couch key. So yeah. Change your uh, key settings. Thank you, Angela. Or get a smaller keyboard. By the way, one thing that a lot of people don't know, and I'm proud to see. You see instantly, unscope, nade. Animation cancel in silver. Very good. Unscope, nade. Now, no need for you to be in front again. Y your brain needs to be like this. Where are my tanks? Are my tanks in front? Okay, I'm in the back. Right now, where are my tanks? My tanks? My tanks? My tanks? My tanks? My tanks? Or is that there? I'm in, the, I'm in her back. You know, in those sections, what if we don't hit the shot onto you or, some, or hook hooked you? Hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. To be honest, in this case, experience wise, who's the best target to Nano? Janka not that much, Hanzo not that much, Maxi not that much, Orisa not that much, Orisa like the only reason you would want Nano Hanzo if she, is if he would go on a flank, Janka if he would be in the enemy team, or if he would be very low HP, Maxi if she would be very low HP, Maxi if you would be in a duo with her and she wants to go battle Maxi she can get kills quite easily if she has good aim even if it's silver, Orisa if she's low, if you don't have anybody else Nano you can also um, Nano Orisa. But the best target in this case is Winston. Just be patient. Not a Winston. Let's see where Winston was. Winston was top left. You got scared. In this case, by the way, the best position to play from is on top of the stacks. Instead of staying here with your squishies, your tanks regroup and you play from top of the stacks. When Winston jumps in over the down, you're right above them. You're going to have your anti probably soon and you will be able to another Winston instead of playing over here in the back. Because you wanted to play with your DPSs, right? If you would be, like right now, imagine this. You're over there on top, easy nade on them, and none of the Winston if needed. You want the team fight regardless, but you invest a lot of those. Okay. 
Yeah, Junkhead, what can you expect? You won the team fight though. Yeah, you won it. No problem. Aren't you the first to get targeted targeted if they flank on stacks? You can just drop pro. For a widow, it's actually a very odd angle if you constantly move. Like I'm not saying staying on stairs non-stop. You move back and forth, left and right. Just keep on moving. It's like a very big wall. It's quite a hard shot for widow and for junkhead. He won't be able to one shot you if you don't stay like right in front of the door. You just stay at the lower and lower base of the stairs. If you feel safe, then you can walk in front. Good execution there. Good anti. This is just panic, comes with time, no need to worry. I mean the mechanics and stuff. Over here again, even if you land a nade or a sleep duct, what do you use? What do you get out of it? You know? Like you're in front. Good sleep duct, so what? Hook! Dead. Understand? This is silver thing. So if I use my nade and my sleep dart in front, what will I get out of it? Ult charge. So what? How much ult charge? I better wait for somebody to be low and get very easy ult charge. So literally just all the time you're using your abilities, especially as Ana, you need to think, can I get something out of it apart from hitting them? So like, yeah, you land the sleep dart. And this is like what happens in comms. This is what, uh, what some manas do. I hope you're done with this. I land the sleep duck. Junkhead sleeping. Team, what the fuck are you doing? I have 20 sleep ducks. Who gives a fuck? Quanti quality over quantity. You wanted to scare the widow off. So, if, yeah. What if you. So, what if you scare the widow off? She has wall hack anyway. What happens? Your entire team is dead. This is a waste from the enemy widow, by the way. It takes 10 seconds for your team to regroup. Your team fully regroups. She only has wall hacks for 5 more seconds. And your team is going to be all around walls. What does she get out of it? It's a waste. Even if you sleep like the Widow. Like you're essentially giving them a free kill. You're the only one in front right now. And by the way, the reason why Hawk got so risky was because she had wall hacks. You can go for the sleep duck. Like I'm not saying you can go for it. Just for extra stats and stuff. But be aware of the fact, especially because you had like a sonic arrow on them. Be aware of the fact that Hog is walking to you and he can hook you. And when he can hook you, you can block his hook by just hugging the wall over here. Okay, you got the sleep duck, but now you walk in front instead of walking to the left. If you walk to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left, not to the right, to the left, you would have dodged the hook and you would have broke. Also, cool tip that I always say, always tell people. When you get hooked, crouch, crouch. You crouched. And you survived with 20 HP, so I'm very proud that you've done that. Oh, I'm gonna move the face cam another time. I'm gonna move the face cam another time. I was just looking over here on top of the screen, because like, he replace the kill if it doesn't matter that much. Again, like, look, you're in front. Play in the back of the tanks. Play in the back of the tanks. Play in the back. Ammon's there. Reload, only one bullet, nobody to heal. Get hooked again. Again, like, still, no cover. Like, although you're in open space. Like, you can just get covered by walking over here against side or staying outside of the hook range by walking backwards a little bit more, right? Like, the position was okay, but you need to be aware. Can hook kill me? Can hook kill me? Can hook kill me? Can hook hook me? Yeah, he can. Okay, dead. He can't hook me because I'm out of range. Good that you're deciding to go to the right side, not left side. Good that you're changing sides. Nade comes with experience, with the usage there. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. This is very important. This is mechanical thing, can help you out. Not that important, I know that it's in silver, but a lot of people don't know, and it can help you out. I know you're on 150 ping, but you had enough time over here because I play on 150 ping as well. So, let me show you. Let me use one nano. Then I'll fuck my ultimate, okay? The game moves so smooth, bro. One cool thing. Applies for other characters as well. To not waste a second out of queue, a lot of people in... A lot of people actually, not necessarily low ratings, 
Just press Q when they see it with their eyes, not when they feel that they're going to get it. And this is like a very big difference uh, that can... Very big thing actually that can help you out quite a lot. So, look at this. Okay. I am 94%. I'm going to heal the bot two times and I'm going to smash my Q. Instantly. I'm going to smash it. I'm not going to wait to see if I have 100 charge then press Q. Right? Like, that's what you did there. You waited. You waited. You waited. You don't wait till it appears. You just press Q before you even have it. Like, you can feel the ticks of it. It's a, like a DPS is not for example, you play Reaper, you really want to get Q, you're gonna smash the Q button, you know, because like you, you can play for like perfect setting, but like synchronize it perfectly. But yeah, a lot of people are very slow with their ultimate usage, I don't know why. So, wait. Shoot, shoot, and I'm close. Q, Q, Q. The second I get it, I'm gonna use it. Cause like over there, like you had a Winston very low, and you hit the shot, right? And this shot has a travel time. Let me show you with a better example, actually. If you know the shot will hit, it's just better to press Q. Let me show you with a better example, actually. Come on, dude, let me heal. Let me heal. 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 One more shot. Okay, look at this. I'm gonna shoot and then I'm gonna nano. I'm not even gonna... I know that the shot will hit, but I don't know exactly when, so to say. I know approximately. Right? So it's very, very good to know. It's a very good thing to know. Use it in very great situations, bro. Look, look at this. 97. You need one shot and then press Q. 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 That's it. Also, it's why I use 100 nano sense for things like this, because like you have to track that. You could have kept the Winston alive a little bit more. Doesn't matter that much. I think Mercy would have came in with Valk. You don't know the outcome. Just would have shaved a little bit more seconds out of the clock. Be nice and chill. From this distant Ash distance, Ash cannot one tap you even if she has a damage boost. Like it's very long range. I think. I hope. So you can be like more safe, like over here. Wait, you pick this. You see the Ash? Or who was here? Yeah, it's Ash. Look for a sleep dog. You hear her shots? Look for a sleep dog. Nade was okay on to Zen, you got the kill. That was a good trajectory. Kill the junk cat to your right. Over here when you walk, if you want to have extra cover, walk to the left side so you can play from the columns instead of staying like in open space. See? Because you weren't past the columns and used this wall, you got headshotted once and your nade was forced, you missed the nade. Moxie died eventually because you were too busy nading yourself. And now if Ash would have hit that shot, you would have died and maybe your team would have fed. So if you would have walked over here instantly by literally like getting in cover, would have been very good. Let's see if you do the same thing, I think. It's not your job to go after the Ash that you're looking after her. Now get in cover. How will you get in cover? Kite back, play from the left side room, play from the room to the right. Because like the Junker is trying to contest you. By the way, the easiest ability to land with Tana is the nade. If possible, just throw the nade. Always, almost always.
It's good that you're constantly moving, stay in scope 10. People in silver just don't fucking move, so. First nano last fight. Good. Your main goal guy now is to stay alive. You can heal up the Zdagi against what damage feel like they have anyway. So your main goal is just to stay alive. Oh, that was a nasty C9. What can you do? Unlucky. That was unlucky. Let's continue on the defense. Yes, you can still animation cancel below due to melee. See now, this is a way better angle because like your brain recognized there's no shield. Walk back and now the flank that we talked about. Junk cats on the flank. And you almost die because of it. This is a good spot to play from, like over here also. But better to the left. He dies because that was way way too much of a risky flank. You have no shield, you can get hit shot by a sniper here, but the Hanzo was dead, so I hope you noticed that. I've talked about how to not to deal with him not playing in LOS in the previous spot. Good, you're, like you're constantly moving in cover now. You not having a shield helps you. Like this is oh, this is your finger at the moment. If you don't have a shield, you're aware that you need cover. If you have a shield, you think that you're in cover. Good use of the nade, very creative. Two minutes, oh, it's so close, dude. You know what I'm thinking right now? I just need to heal, not die, get nano, maybe nano somebody in case they get a kill, because we're 6 versus 5. 6 versus 4. Even if I get I don't need to die. I just need to be safe, heal up people. And th this is a very small thing. You can ask for heal from your Mercy after she uses Valk so she gets full charge after because they were already two people dead. And you maybe would have needed a nade here. Also, if you're not under any immediate threat of dying because everybody was over here, there was no way you would get damaged, you can even play without HP. See, like, just little, little small things. Hanzo died a while ago. You can pick long range because the Hanzo can kill you from that distance. Now, this is the space that I talked about also on Gibraltar, if you're here. It's about taking the space that you can take about the effective range, you know, that we talked also about at the beginning. Like, yeah, who can kill me? Junker, I can see it. Baptiste needs to aim very good and I am going to dodge around this. Ball needs to come to me. Moira needs to come to me. Simon needs to come to me. If you would have kept your nade and asked for heal or even play without HP, you would have saved your Reaper, your Reaper earlier because he got rest and your Mercy would have had rest. Second, if you would have realized that Hanzo died earlier and there's no long range thing, like, there's nothing long range that can kill you. Even if you don't have a shield, you could have walked and played from here a little bit and saved the Zaga with the Nano. Now let's see if you want the team fight. Dude, that junk had so yolo, I swear. Oh, that was so close. Maxi dies. Yeah, I don't have anybody else to Nano. I mean, you had, but that's just experience. And then you're gonna lose. Yeah, I can't do anything. But, again, if you would have done those two things, you could have won the game probably. The fight, then maybe in overtime you would have been able to win the game. You know? Maybe. So again, I'll play this. This dies. So Bappy's dead. Use the nade. Kill them up. Hammond dies. Two people dead. This is how your brain needs to work. You see top right corner, four people alive, four people alive, four people alive, three people alive, three people alive. Three people dead. Bop respawning, walking from spawn. Ball dead. Hands are dead. I can play from here, bro. This is my my area. I can do whatever I want. Walk over here, get damaged once. No problem. I mean, yeah, you're kind of scared because of the junk rat, but 
can just ask for heals, no need for nano. Now if you would have had the nade again, nade here, reaper saved. Anyway, let's say you don't save him, you get the guess, walk left, walk left, you can use the payload as cover against Baptista's bullets, none of the Zagia, and that's it. And then they won, they won because of it. If you want me to be completely honest, I don't think this is the silver of what give you so to say. I mean, I know you're against silver, but I can show, I can see your intentions. Your decision making overall and the intentions you have, it shows that you watch other players play and they try to copy their play style. And I think brain wise, you're more than gold at least. Mechanical wise, you're probably silver to low golds. You need to work on that. And I'll be completely honest, you remind me of myself trying to learn other games and trying to learn Overwatch actually at the beginning as I was trying to do everything very complicated at the beginning instead of taking it with the basics. This is how I learned. I did mistakes like this, moving non-stop, having bad aim, doing bad decisions, but I all the time was honest with myself. I was like, I wasted that night. I wasted that sleep. Like, I wasted that nano. If you keep on doing this, practice, I highly recommend for you playing free for all with Ana, with Moira, with healers, with who, who you want to play, understanding duels, watching other players play, watching professional games, um, maybe joining a team and playing in teams and stuff like that, doing aim training practices, you can do mine, you can search on YouTube for others, doing uh, custom game modes and other stuff like that, then um, yeah, you should be... You should be just fine in my opinion. By the way, Zarya's position is quite interesting. Anyway, that's about it for the VODs at the moment. Hope you learned a thing or two.